Thank you very much. Can you all hear? Good evening. Holy cow. Good evening. We're going to ask you to make your way to your seats if we could so we could introduce our head table and our honorary guest tonight. I'm Chuck Gatica. I'm on loan. Just so everybody knows, it's cold out there. I know. It's a slippery slope. Don't boo me now. Cuddle alerts in this house for this evening have to come with a little tahini and hummus. But you can have one for the entire weekend. It is my pleasure to be back as your MC for this wonderful event this evening to celebrate three decades of accomplishments and commitments and leadership. Welcome to the Arab American and Chaldean Council's 30th Annual Civic and Humanitarian Awards Gala. At this time, I would like to introduce our head table. They're already making their way in. Ladies and gentlemen, with us this evening, the Bahraini Ambassador to the United States of America, the Honorable Huda Nunu, the ACC President and CEO, Dr. Haifa Fakuri, the ACC Board Chairman, Abe Mungfa, and his lovely wife, Darlene Mungfa, Mr. Manuel Matty Maroon and his lovely wife, Nora Maroon. Welcome. My wife, Mrs. Susan Gatica. Detroit Mayor Dave Bing and his lovely wife, Mrs. Yvette Bing. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. From our great state of Michigan, the Attorney General Mike Cox and his wife, Mrs. Laura Cox. Welcome. Staying in our state, a great one it is, Lieutenant Governor, Michigan's Lieutenant Governor John D. Cherry and his lovely wife, Mrs. Pamela M. Ferris. Welcome. Ford Motor Company Fund Director of Community Development and Fund Operations, Ms. Pamela Alexander. United States Senator Debbie Stabenow, welcome. And last but not least, our ACC board member, Mr. Walid Khalif, and his lovely wife, Mrs. Cheryl Khalife. We have a wonderful program planned. Would you please remain standing, our head table, and ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand as we welcome tonight and bring in on a patriotic note someone very special. Singing tonight's national anthem is a senior at North Farmington High School. She spent her summer vacation volunteering at the Arab American and Chaldean Council in Oak Park at the School District Ref Refugee Academy program. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please help me welcome Amanda Gamu and her father, who's here with her tonight, and her sister, to sing our national anthem. stripes and bright stars through the peril let's fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets were 
Thank you, Amanda. What a wonderful young lady she is, and uh, she told me off mic a few minutes ago her mission as she leaves high school is to go into music therapy. Isn't that awesome? Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for this evening's invocation. At this time, I would like to call to our podium Father, uh, Father George Shalhub, who will be here to join us. He's from Basilica of St. Mary's Antiochian Orthodox Church. Father. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. O Lord, who at all time and every hour in heaven and on earth is worshiped and glorified. Lord, you loved the just and you showed mercy to sinners. You called all of us to mission in life, to work, to care for the least among us and for our brother and sister. Lord, bless us and bless the work and mission as ACC celebrates 30 years. We give you thanks for the leadership the staff, and all the devotion as they left a mark on our heart and our city. We also give you thanks, O Lord, and gratitude for those whom we come to honor. Bless them with good health. Bless them with good life. And grant them to be always servant. For thou art, O Lord, the Lord of mercy, we pray, O oh Lord, in this season, as we bow our head tonight, for peace. Peace in our home, in our cities, in our community, in our association, in our nation. Bless our nation and all of us gather here as we ask you to bless the food and drink of your servant now and forever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Father George. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a very special welcome to the Arab American and Chaldean Council's 30th Annual Civic and Humanitarian Awards Gala. Tonight we join together to not only commemorate three solid decades of service, we're also here to recognize the leadership and responsibilities associated with that service. This evening's program, celebrating 30 years of growth and promising futures, honors ACC's dedication to building communities while instilling hope for futures filled with endless opportunities. It is our honor and privilege to have a number of international, federal and state and local officials, community-based organizations and religious institutions who are here with us this evening in solidarity. On behalf of ACC, a big thank you for being here tonight, for helping us achieve the level of growth and prosperity we see today and for your continued support for our future goals and vision. For 30 years, ACC has delivered human services, counseling, and opportunities to our communities. They've grown impressively from a single, one-person office serving 421 clients in its first year of operation to providing 600,000 services to over 89,000 clients annually. ACC has served not only the Arab and Chaldean community, but all those in need who live in the multi-ethnic neighborhoods where 40 ACC outreach offices are located throughout Southeast Michigan. These individuals not only benefit from the specialized services, but they're also empowered by the necessary resources and the valuable tools that are offered by the staff. Every single person who walks through an ACC door, many doors, receives the support they need to help them build their futures that they dream of. But who better to describe the importance of ACC's leadership and care than the clients themselves? Ladies and gentlemen, would you please turn your attention to our screens at the right and the left for a brief glimpse into ACC's world and the difference it makes.
for to see this, this community uh, resource center that has helped me and my children and my family sort of redirect us. wanted to do, but I knew it wanted to be uh, something in, in the legal system. And I had some really good instructors. Uh, we talked about different things, and it came to my mind that I want to become a paralegal. And I went through their free program, and I ended up going to school. I love it. It's worth getting up in the morning. I enjoy being there. I've learned so much. This is just the beginning of my journey. And I'm just very happy. <laughs> house to come to, which gave me a sense of purpose and I had lots of support. They gave me a lot of responsibility, so I felt like, wow, you know, I really need it. I felt like I was actually working. I felt like I actually had a job. With the clubhouse, we have work order days, and I would participate in the kitchen a lot because I love to cook, and I was given kind of a free will to do it. So when I got hired, the kitchen unit was without a leader. So I got to run the kitchen unit. I just, I don't think I would've made it without the clubhouse, I really don't. <laughs> My name is Dr. Obeid. Uh, I'm the uh, medical director for the primary care clinic. We treat different uh, medical problems and very common problems like diabetes, hypertension, back pain, uh, common infections. Also we take care of uh, patients who have uh, heart disease, stroke, cancer. Uh, our main focus is on prevention. We see patients uh, who have insurance and also we see a lot of patients who have no insurance. We, over the past years, um, we did uh, many things uh, to help those who are uninsured uh, uh, to get uh, a decent medical care. <laughs> I'm 
الناس يستقبلون الاستقبال يعني طيب قدموا لنا خدمات من الترجمه الى املاء الاستماع للفوتوستاب الملكين حتى ندرس هنا والهدف منها توظيفنا للعمل امريكا وقدم في الخدمه بامريكا And uh, the name of my wife. Now I improve my ability to speak English very well. Now I can fill up an application or read or write or uh, or speak very well. بس أشكر أنا طبعاً قبل كل شيء وكلامي الأخير هو وجه يعني كل الناس المجلس العربي الأمريكي الكلداني هم الذي يقومون بكل واجباتهم. حقيقة It is these very stories that make up ACC commitment to serve the community. The testimonials you just heard are only a glimpse of the impact and work achieved every day by our staff through your support. As we celebrate another year of commitment to the community, we look back with great pride and appreciation to you, our friends and partners. We also look forward with a continued vision of building hope and promise. With your help and unwavering support, we will continue to turn hopeless thoughts into fruitful realities. Nice job, thank you. I should point out that that remarkable work, as a side note, was produced and edited by a recent college graduate with the help of ACC's volunteer staff, and they did a very nice job. As you've just witnessed, the needs of our communities remain great. In spite of the demand for increased services due to tough economic and political times, ACC has stepped up to the challenge in offering additional support in child assistance, food, counseling, employment and training, and other basic needs. If you'd like to learn more about ACC's commitment and services and you would like to find out how you can support their efforts, it's pretty easy. You can go on the World Wide Web at myacc.org. That's myacc.org. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to bring up a friend. This is a man who I'm delighted to introduce. He is ACC's board chairman, Abe Mungfa. Abe is here as a member of the board, not just this year, but since 1996. Abe is in his third term as chairman. As a leader, he's worked closely with members of the board to improve the quality of life for communities in Detroit. Mr. Mukfa is here as chairman and CEO of the engineering, planning, and the surveying firm, Mukfa & Associates, LLC. ACC is fortunate to have such an accomplished community member as its board chairman. Would you please help me welcome ACC Board Chairman, Abe Monfa. Uh, thank you, Chuck. Thank you for, your, for your friendship, and thank you for being here with us today. I guess I, uh, the staff tell me I have to do some uh, housekeeping here. Uh, we are allowed only two minutes to speak, so all you speakers better make sure you don't extend beyond two minutes or you're going to be thrown out of here. So make sure you make it short. Truly, as I look around the room and as I was uh, outside in the reception area, I have seen so many familiar faces and so many friends. And for that, we thank you a lot. Each of you are here tonight because of your dedication to our mission. And because of the support, we have been able to carry this throughout, through three decades. I also, when I was walking around the crowd, I've seen several of the, of the founding members and past chairman of this organization, and I believe they are here with us. I'd like to take a moment to recognize them and see if they can stand up and be recognized. All the uh, past chairman and founding members, would you please stand up? <laughs> uh, 
I truly can't explain the level of the, of the pride that I have tonight and the gratitude in my heart to each one of you for helping us to create this family of devoted uh, people who've been working together for the last 30 years. As we complete yet another successful year, we maintain our pursuit for healthy communities throughout southeastern Michigan. With the continued support of each of you, ACC can continue to expand and grow its services to reach all individuals who are in need throughout, throughout the state, southeastern Michigan, the state, and throughout the world also. A special and sincere thanks to our, to our ACC staff. As you know, no organization can work and, and perform without a good staff, and we have the best. Uh, also, I want to thank, take a moment to thank the ACC gala team who put this function together for you, and uh, I think they've done a, a great job, don't you think? And again, I want to take another moment to thank Chuck Gatica because we really wanted him. We wanted him last year. He couldn't make it. He had another commitment. And thank you for being here. <laughs> and finally, I would like to express my thanks and appreciation to the ACC Board of Directors for whom have elected me to be their leader for the last three years. These are an outstanding group of people who are leaders of this community, who come together and, and give of their own time, and not only their own time, their own time and funds and money. And we really appreciate all your work for us and for the entire community. I would like to take a special moment to ask the members of the board to stand and be recognized at this time. One other event that I would like to, uh, to mention that we had this year, uh, in addition to all the services that we provided to the community, we have uh, awarded 11 scholarships for deserving young people who have just finished high school and they're uh, planning to proceed with higher educa education. It's been a wonderful three years for me, and, and since I was elected as a chairman of the board, and I look forward to working with the ACC team members, with the staff, with the rest of the board members for years to come. Again, thank you and enjoy the evening. Thank you very much, Abe. Now I'd like to uh, ask Dr. Haifa Fakouri to make her word of the, uh, way to the stage with Abe so we can continue our presentation. We're waiting for one person who must be tied up in I-96 traffic. How many of us were there? Yeah. So we'll get, yeah, <laughs> that gets applause, does it? Uh, we're going to continue with our program. So if Dr. Fakuri could make her way up with Abe, we will continue with our presentation. At this time, we want to start honoring some individuals who are very important to our community. Honored tonight are exceptional people in their own right. They're committed to enhancing the quality of life for all individuals and improving our communities by creating opportunities of economic growth and leadership. Our first award recipient of the evening is a Michigan champion. As the first woman from Michigan to be elected to the United States Senate, she has risen in leadership as Senate Conference Secretary and now Chair of the Democratic Steering Committee and Outreach Committee. A nationally recognized leader, she is respected for her ability to build coalitions to get things done for Michigan and our nation. Her recent appointment to the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, the membership on the Senate Finance and Agriculture and Budget Committees have given her a powerful and unique role in shaping our nation's health care, manufacturing, and energy policies. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you'll agree with me when I say she is befitting of this recognition and she is here tonight to accept. Would you please help us welcome tonight's Leadership Award recipient, U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow. Well, thank you, Chuck, and good evening. It is so wonderful to be back at this annual event, 30 years. 
and it's wonderful to see uh, the leadership, ongoing leadership of uh, Dr. Haifa Fakori. Will you please give her a round of applause with me? Abe Mumfa, and to all the board, everyone who is so committed to this wonderful service organization, thank you for what you do. I, I also want to give a special welcome to Your Excellency, Ambassador Nunu. We are honored to have you with us this evening. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. And to all of the other uh, awardees this evening, uh, it, it really is very special for me to be here, but more important to me is to say thank you for all of the work that you do. Your commitment to Detroit, your commitment to young people, to families, to job training, to mental health assistance, to help with individuals who are uh, needing to be employed, to help with new citizens. And we have spent time together. I understand the, the critical need for us to be welcoming and supporting those who are coming to our community uh, as immigrants, coming here, asking us to help them be able to get a fresh start in our great state. ACC is a wonderful partner to so many people and organizations, to the city of Detroit, to the state, and I just want to say thank you for touching people's lives in a very meaningful way, and it's my honor to be one of your partners. Thank you, Chuck. May I have this mic, please? I have to. I have to just say congratulations. First of all, thank you. Thank you. I, I have never told this story in public because I've never had the chance. No, <laughs> I haven't had the chance. First of all, this is the only United States senator I've ever danced with. Uh oh, that's true. But but more importantly, more importantly, a few years at the auto show, I've never told this story in public. I am doing a live broadcast from the International Auto Show, and in my peripheral vision. You know how sometimes you see people doing things and horns will honk and someone heckles someone. I can see in my peripheral vision someone is doing this to me. <laughs> and I get done being live. It's live, so whatever I'm saying, I have to keep it going. And I turn, and I was being heckled by a United States senator. <laughs> and I've never had a chance to thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. And he deserved every bit of it. <laughs> thank you, Clyde. Congratulations, Senator. Our next award is twofold. The first recipient is a seasoned leader who has successfully worked to ensure that the state government is efficient and shares Michigan's priorities. With more than 20 years of service in the Michigan legislature, he has focused his career on the issues that were most important to Michigan citizens. Family, quality of life, the environment, Michigan's great outdoors. He's also authored and co-sponsored several milestone Michigan laws dealing with workers' rights, environmental protection, and conservation. In his current role, he has led the Lieutenant Governor's Commission on Higher Education and Economic Growth, making a series of recommendations that have brought higher education into larger discussion of creating and retaining jobs as well here in Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Lieutenant Governor John D. Cherry, recipient of ACC's State Leadership Award. Haifa and Abe, I really wish to express my appreciation and the honor that I feel that uh, you have bestowed on me, your staff and the board and the members of ACC. You do such an outstanding job to be honored along with this esteemed group of honorees it is, is humbling, but it is also, uh, I think, uh, a way to express my appreciation, and I know the appreciation of uh, all of us at the state of Michigan for the great work that the ACC does in helping maintain the fabric of our quality of life in the state. 
These are very difficult times. And uh, in those challenging times, you have risen to the challenge. You have helped make life better for thousands of people throughout the state of Michigan, particularly here in Southeast Michigan. So I want to take this opportunity tonight to thank you for the great work you've done. And again, thank you so much for this award. The second recipient of the State Leadership Award is known as the People's Lawyer and the CEO of Michigan's largest law firm. Since taking office, he has delivered record-setting performances on behalf of consumers and seniors and children, recovering $3.2 billion for Michigan consumers. His special passion is the protection of Michigan's children. His first-in-the-nation child support unit has helped over 60,000 Michigan children receive the child support that they deserve. In addition, he's developed an award-winning internet safety program, the Cy Cyber Safety Initiative, which has taught more than 415,000 K-8 through students. For seniors and the uninsured, he has created michigandrugprices.com, a website where you can shop for the best deal on prescription drugs anywhere in Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, the night's second State Leadership Award recipient, Attorney General Mike Cox. Thank you very much, Chuck, and, and of course, uh, thank you, Dr. Ficori and, and Abe as well for your leadership. I have to tell you that I am so honored and flattered to be here for two reasons. Uh, the first one is, is that I'm a basketball coach for fourth and fifth graders, and now when the kids ask me, uh, Coach Cox, are you any, were you any good at basketball, I can now say, well, I won't say I was good or bad. I'll, I'll just tell you, I've won the same award as Dave Bing. <laughs> so, I, uh, now I, as, as we walked in tonight, and I saw the picture of Dr. Ficori and, and Governor Milliken from 1979, I was reminded of that proverb, and many of you have probably heard it, that a wise man plants trees so that his children may have protection from the rain and the sun and the storms. And it's also been translated that a wise man plants trees so that his children may have fruit to eat and prosper from. And when I saw that photograph, I thought of 30 years ago and the work that ACC and Dr. Ficori and so many of the board members and Abe have done where they have planted trees that have offered protection to so many folks, whether they were from Yemen or Iraq or whether they were a, a native Detroiter on, Northwest, on the northwest side, to offer protection. Or they, they planted so many seeds that have grew, grown in the trees that have provided so many folks with skills, uh, that provided them with the, with the fruit that they need to prosper and grow and to make this community a, a, a greater and better place to live. I am truly honored to be here tonight with this great, great uh, council. I am humbled truly humbled that you have honored me tonight. And I want to say thank you, not only for what you've done, but for what you're going to do and what you continue to do. For those people who will seek the shade of your tree in the years to come, and those people who will seek the fruits of, of the trees in terms of tr job training and, and, and counseling and everything else that ACC has to offer. They may not know what ACC is tonight, but they will come to learn the good works of this great, great group. So once again, thank you, Dr. Ficori. Thank you, Chairman Munfa. And thank you all for this great, great honor. Our next award recipient has turned his winning leadership strategies from the basketball court to the boardroom as founder of an automotive supply corporation. He was recognized by Black Enterprise as a leader of one of the nation's top minority-owned companies. In 1999, he worked to provide employment opportunities by partnering with Ford Motor Company to build the Detroit Manufacturing Training, Training Center, a nonprofit facility to help prepare unemployed and underemployed workers to obtain jobs in the auto supply industry. Answering yet another call, he decided to run for mayor in a special election and was chosen the 62nd mayor of Detroit, providing lots of leadership and proving that the basics of good performance, integrity, and in business can be applied to any area in industry, 
or otherwise, he has brought a renewed sense of trust and hope to the city of Detroit. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please help me welcome the recipient of the City Leadership Award, Mayor Dave Bing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank, you uh, thank you very much, Chuck, and for the leadership of ACC. Uh, I am truly honored and, and proud to be here tonight uh, to accept this award. I also want to give congratulations to the other recipients, uh, those that I know very well for a long time and are very, very deserving. Um, when I look at um, what you do and what you mean to this community, uh, I am truly honored to be here tonight because your leadership has helped people like me to follow in your footsteps. 30 years of what you've been doing uh, in our community in terms of job training, in terms of health care, in terms of education means so much to all of us. And as we all know, we're in very, very difficult times and we're called upon to do a lot of different things. Uh, I'm looking forward, uh, hopefully, for the next four years in a leadership position and working very closely with you because I feel that there's so much that I can learn and I'm looking forward to the help that we'll be calling upon you uh, over these next years. So thank you so very much for the honor and it's my pleasure being here with you tonight. Thank you. Before we announce our next award recipient, I would like to once again ask you to please turn your attention to our screens on the right and left of the stage for a quick look into a local family business that under the leadership of one man has grown into a large, multifaceted enterprise. My dad bought the company in 1946. It was called Central Cartage Company at that time. I always did work for my dad. I worked for him when he had a gas station, and I worked for him when he had uh, a trucking company. We had our own driver's committee, we made all the rules. <laughs> did a good job, and then in 77, we purchased some more authority. We were very fortunate, we grew along with the, both the economies of Canada and the U.S. the people we do business with be as successful or more than we are. Our motive is not necessarily profit only, by far. It's a family atmosphere, um, and that starts, I believe, from, from the top, being a family-owned company, um, and it goes all the way down into the terminals all throughout the different regions of the company. You can see when you walk into different terminals, the family aspect, that people want to come to work, that people don't just clock in and clock out, that they want to be here and they want to see us succeed and achieve the goals that we want to achieve as a company. We want to help our customers. Uh, we want to continue to provide an excellent service product to them as well as a low cost price. We try to do our very best to be sure that everyone knows our feelings and I know their feelings too. It's been a good 22 years. Like I've always said to the new guys coming in, you know, we're still here. The paycheck's there every week. Yeah, these are good people. I really feel that we've laid a lot of foundations in the last decade to make the next 10 years some of our best years, if not the best. Everybody today is, is looking at the fact that all they hear is, is doom and gloom in the news, and yet here's a company that's opening terminals, that's expanding. I think we could continue to grow and gain more concentration in our markets improve our facilities, and grow from within. Most people would think that success is because you made some money, but I think that, uh, that you serve the public and money is a secondary kind of a thing. Gentlemen.